I believe that we have to go to a non-negotiated price, totally online, transparent, 100% pickup and delivery model. Ford is on the verge of closing down. Things don't look good for them, so the once giant manufacturer is now selling their cars for extremely cheap prices. This means even those functional, loved, and just amazing cars are now basically selling for a penny. But should you go out and buy one of these cars? And what is gonna happen to Ford? What will be the impact of this? And exactly how did Ford get here? See, Ford is facing serious trouble. Some might even say they are teetering on the edge of bankruptcy. The situation is so dire that they have no choice but to slash prices dramatically on all their vehicles, from electric cars to their reliable trucks. But make no mistake, this isn't some impulsive reaction to a crisis. Instead, it's a carefully plotted strategy aimed at grabbing your attention and ultimately your wallet. Now, you might be thinking, this sounds like a golden opportunity for savvy shoppers. On the surface, it does indeed seem like a steal for anyone in the market for a new ride. But hold that excitement for just a moment. There's a lot more lurking beneath these flashy discounts than meets the eye. And if you don't know what these are, you will eventually fall into these traps. You have to always ask, what's the catch? Because folks, the catch is actually us and our wallets. Let me explain. But before we do that, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss out. What's behind the discounts? Well, you need to understand this very clearly. These discounts are not just a quick slapdash fix. It's a meticulously planned scheme, and the bold actions they are taking have some unexpected consequences that may not be obvious at first glance. Honestly, I was startled by the real risks hidden behind these enticing discounts, and I'm going to break them down into three critical concerns that you should definitely keep in your sights. See, every automaker experiences bumps in the road from time to time, but how Ford navigates this challenging moment will undoubtedly leave a mark on how consumers and the market perceive them moving forward. Unfortunately, it looks like they are struggling to keep their wheels on the ground. Let me clarify, they are not just passively sitting by, they are grappling with a colossal challenge. Imagine rows upon rows of Ford vehicles, including the iconic F-150s, creating what looks like a massive metallic city at dealerships, all just waiting for new owners. And it's not just hearsay, look at the staggering sight of hundreds, perhaps even thousands, of F-150s and their electrified counterparts, the F-150 Lightnings, jammed together in a massive traffic snarl at Ford's extensive Dearborn test track. To make matters worse, Ford has been hush-hush about these puzzling backlogs. They vaguely mention that these trucks are undergoing quality control tests, but isn't it a little strange that these checks are being done now, long after the vehicles have left the production line? Considering Ford's history with recalls, which has seen them topping the recall charts for three years consecutively, this raises some serious red flags. Instead of conducting rigorous quality checks during production, it appears they prefer to quickly churn out trucks and fix whatever issues arise rise afterward. While this might allow them to meet current demand, it leaves plenty of questions hanging over their reliability and whether their initial quality testing is thorough enough before these trucks hit the roads. From an industry standpoint, this could jeopardize Ford's reputation for building reliable and high quality vehicles, if they even have that reputation intact these days. Seriously, have you kept up with the recent recalls surrounding vehicles like the Bronco and F-150? Ford had to recall 43,000 units of the Bronco because of some alarming gas leak problems. And don't forget about the over 550,000 F-150 pickup trucks sent back to the shop due to a faulty transmission issue. That's just the tip of the iceberg. Ford has also recalled over 125,000 vehicles, including the 2020 to 2023 Ford Escape, Ford Maverick, and Lincoln Corsair due to engine failures that pose a fire risk. Can you even wrap your head around that? These are not minor issues that can be brushed aside with simple fixes. Take the Bronco's problem for example, the core trouble stemmed from fuel injectors that are notorious for leaking. When gasoline leaks out and meets scorching hot engine parts, it's akin to rolling out the red carpet for a fire hazard to come crashing in. You really don't need to be an automotive expert to understand why this is a bad situation. Now, you'd think Ford would opt for a robust and lasting solution, such as replacing those faulty injectors altogether, right? Wrong. Ford has taken Taken a different route instead. Their so-called remedy involves slapping on a tube that redirects the leaking fuel away from the hot engine components, allowing it to drip onto the ground. While it sounds like a smart workaround, let's not kid ourselves, it's hardly a revolutionary answer. 
Sure, this makeshift solution might help dodge the immediate threat of a fire, but it also invites a whole new set of potential problems. Think unexpected slowdowns or even complete stalling while you're zooming down the freeway. This isn't exactly the seamless driving experience you've been dreaming about. Now let me throw this question out to you. Would you actually consider buying these models knowing everything you know now? And this is merely scratching the surface. The reliability issues are just one thing concealed behind these tempting discounts. Get ready, because I've got the full rundown coming your way before you get seduced by that shiny price tag. The numbers don't lie. Have you ever found yourself pondering one curious question? Where do all the savings from these discount prices come from? Is Ford simply allowing its profit margins to take a hit while trying to offer customers a break? It sounds improbable, doesn't it? Who would actually make such a sacrifice, especially in light of declining sales figures? To understand the complexities of this situation, let's take a closer look at some compelling statistics. Last year, Ford witnessed a noticeable sales jump of 7.1%, marking a significant achievement as their trucks sales surpassed the 1 million mark, which reflects an impressive increase of 13%. If that doesn't grab your attention, consider the twist. Despite these soaring sales figures, Ford's market share shrank to a mere 13% by the end of the year. Isn't that puzzling? We're left to wonder how increased sales can coincide with a decline in market share. To truly dissect this puzzle, we need to delve into the intricate dynamics at play within the automotive industry. Market share is about more than just the number of vehicles sold. It's essential to examine how Ford compares to its competitors in the market. Even with those seemingly positive sales figures, Ford finds itself wrestling with an ever-shrinking piece of the pie in the overall market. You might be scratching your head right now, confused about how Ford could manage to increase sales while simultaneously experiencing a downturn in its market share. The answer lies in a clever strategy taken straight from Ford's traditional playbook, the Stair-Step Dealer Incentive Program. This fairly straightforward concept operates on the principle that the more trucks a dealership sells, the greater the rewards they accrue. This program offers dealerships significant incentives for every 2023 F-150 sold. And that's just the beginning. If they meet certain sales targets, those rewards become even more enticing. It's clear why dealerships would go the extra mile to sell these trucks. With such alluring incentives, they are fully committed to turbocharging their sales efforts. However, let's be honest here. The intense pressure to meet these ambitious targets can lead to questionable tactics. Many dealerships have reported that these incentive-driven strategies often prioritize prioritize sales targets over delivering excellent customer experiences. The primary focus shifts toward closing the deal. In such an environment, customers may find themselves feeling somewhat shortchanged by the end of their purchase journey. While plenty of dealerships strive to uphold outstanding service standards, there are definitely some that seem more motivated by their commissions than by ensuring you receive the best service possible. This brings us to a thought-provoking ethical dilemma. Are these sales methods crossing an ethical line? It raises important questions about the practices within the automotive sales industry and what should happen when financial incentives overshadow customer satisfaction. It's an area worth exploring further as it sparks discussions not just about business tactics, but about fundamental values. Think about it for a moment. In a world where customers are increasingly informed and empowered, is it right for dealerships to prioritize numbers over customer relationships? In an era where transparency and integrity are paramount, how can businesses ensure that their practices align with the values they want to embody? Moreover, the impact of these incentive programs doesn't just affect customers, it ripples through the entire industry. When competitive pressure leads dealerships to prioritize volume over quality, it can result in a negative perception of the brand as a whole. Customers may begin to associate the brand with high-pressure sales tactics or feel that their needs aren't genuinely regarded by the dealerships. This scenario can create a dangerous cycle. A dealership may achieve short-term gains through aggressive sales tactics, but at what cost? Would they lose Use loyal customers who seek meaningful interactions and value-based relationships? By fostering a customer-centric approach, dealerships can not only enhance the buying experience but also cultivate long-term loyalty. A focus on building relationships rather than merely closing deals could help transform the dealership landscape. Happy customers who feel valued are more likely to return and recommend the brand to others. Ultimately, it's time for a deeper conversation about how the automotive sales model can evolve. Are we ready to confront these challenges head on and seek a balance between profit and ethics? But that is not even the most important question. Think about it. What does this mean to you? To grasp the real intentions behind these discounts and tactics, it's vital to understand Ford's current financial predicament. 
A report from the Autopian reveals that Ford is currently incurring an alarming loss of $36,000 on every electric vehicle they sell. That's right, their ambitions in the electric vehicle space are coming at a tremendous financial cost. Last year, they recorded a staggering loss of $4.7 billion in pursuit of electrification. And if you thought that was concerning, brace yourself. This year's forecast paints an even darker picture, with projected losses climbing to $5.5 billion. Yet regardless of these daunting financial setbacks, Ford remains undeterred. They're not backing down. In fact, they're intensifying their commitment to electrification and making significant investments to expand their electric vehicle lineup. But why continue throwing money into a seemingly losing venture? What's particularly captivating here is that a substantial part of this narrative revolves around the advanced technology they're embedding in their automobiles. Additionally, Ford is not alone in this journey. Other significant industry players like Chrysler, Subaru, and Mercedes-Benz are also rolling out new cars packed with innovative proprietary software. This isn't merely a quest for tech advancements, it's a purposeful strategy aimed at steering repair business through dealership networks. What does this spell out for you? Essentially, your car's repair needs could end up being largely tied to authorized service centers. Routine maintenance is likely to transform into mandatory visits to dealerships and into Independent mechanics? They're facing hurdles in accessing crucial software unless they're willing to invest significantly. And guess who gets left with the bill? You guessed it, it's you. The result of all this? You'll encounter fewer options for repairs, a much lighter wallet, and diminished competition. Independent mechanics, who can offer personalized service at competitive rates, are now facing significant challenges. They require costly diagnostic tools and manufacturer specific software just to effectively perform their jobs. Lacking these resources, limits their ability to provide a broad spectrum of services, essentially forcing them to either adapt or risk going out of business. This illustrates how Ford plans to recover the money it's losing through these discounts. On top of financial strains, they are also asserting control by monopolizing repair services and dictating service pricing. Their vehicles filled with complex and high-tech components justify higher maintenance costs. The proprietary software and unique parts they incorporate reinforce the perception that their vehicles merit every single dollar of those premium price tags. This leads us to a crucial point. You must conduct extensive research before yielding to those attractive discounted prices on these cars. Before I reveal the last and perhaps most surprising factor in this unfolding narrative, let me share something that has truly astonished me. We now enter the realm of a vicious cycle. Now, these rather dubious software systems might be acceptable if their cars didn't break down at such alarming rates. However, we are already familiar with the reliability issues present in these vehicles. Every time your car inevitably breaks down, you can be sure that Ford cashes in handsomely. This creates a cyclical issue. As buyers become aware of the decline in quality, they may choose to abandon these vehicles. What comes next? The same cycle continues. Ford keeps slashing prices and compromising on features, leading to an even greater number of dissatisfied customers. It's a constant loop of cuts and complaints. But hold on, there's a key player in this entire narrative that we need to address. The insurance companies. This issue is monumental, and to explain how it plays out, let's delve into how various electric vehicle manufacturers are dealing with significant price reductions. Not just Ford, but also Tesla, the pioneers of electric cars facing their own array of obstacles. And what's Tesla's approach to managing their challenges? They lowered prices to move their unsold inventory. For example, the Model Y experienced a significant reduction of $7,500 from its original price, and that doesn't even take into account potential tax credits that could further sweeten the offer. Now, let's unpack the details further. When these electric vehicles break down or even sustain minor damages, insurance companies frequently classify them as total losses. But why does this happen? It's not merely because the damages are overwhelming. It's primarily due to soaring repair costs. With estimated repair expenses sometimes matching the car's market value, insurers prefer to write off the vehicle instead of navigating through the complications and financial burdens of extensive repairs. Just imagine this scenario. You purchase a brand new Tesla, and after a minor accident, the insurance company decides the hassle of repair isn't worth it. They just write it off as a total loss. Moreover, the payout from the insurance insurance often falls short of covering the cost of obtaining another Tesla. Insurance companies are beginning to panic over repair cost estimates, particularly for vehicles with low mileage and are increasingly opting to mitigate their own losses. 
Insurance companies are laser focused on minimizing risk and cost overhead. When repair bills skyrocket to $50,000 or more, they're likely to declare the vehicle a total loss instead of approving costly repairs. And can you blame them? We're not talking about quick fixes here. We're discussing long delays that can extend beyond three months. To make matters worse, that means insurance providers are obliged to cover rental fees for the duration, which can accumulate into substantial costs over several months. Multiply that by numerous claims, and it results in a significant financial burden for these companies. Their solution? Simply write off the car and protect their financial bottom line, leaving Tesla owners and others in a remarkably precarious position. For you, this results in a significant amount of stress. Handling a total loss is a daunting task. It involves negotiating with your insurance company for a fair settlement, searching for a replacement vehicle, and managing all the logistics around disposing of a wrecked vehicle. Honestly, it can feel like a full-time job, but Tesla isn't the only one feeling the financial pinch. Every manufacturer in the electric vehicle arena is grappling with these identical difficulties. We are spotlighting Tesla here because many respected names in the industry, including Ford, are meticulously examining Tesla's strategies. Tesla's alluring appeal lies in its stunning design and pioneering technology. However, this very innovation transforms repairs into an absolute nightmare. The advanced features and specialized materials present in Teslas can be challenging to fix without the requisite expertise and tools. And don't get me started on the parts shortages. You'll be hard pressed to find what you need. Parts for Tesla vehicles often must be ordered directly from the manufacturer, leading to frustratingly long waiting times and exorbitant costs. Additionally, repair services can be pricier since technicians require specific training to handle Tesla's intricate systems. The battery packs alone are a whole different challenge. They're exquisitely advanced and sensitive, and any damage can spell disaster. More often than not, it ends up being cheaper to write off a damaged electric vehicle entirely than to attempt repair. Now, I have to be straightforward, these corporations are claiming to find solutions to these issues. However, the credibility of such claims is hard to believe given the ongoing troubles experienced by their vehicles, especially those produced by Ford. Let me explain. Look, the narrative doesn't simply conclude there. As governments became aware of how manufacturers utilize software to regulate repairs and maintenance, they started enacting new regulations. Yet, these efforts have faced significant challenges and may not be effective. Now, think about your friendly neighborhood garage for a moment. Not some overly commercialized dealership, but a local shop loaded with expertise and tools capable of fixing your vehicle without breaking the bank, even when it comes to electric models. Sounds pretty incredible, right? This is essentially what right to repair laws aim to achieve. They're tailored to empower consumers and independent repair businesses by granting access to tools and information that are usually tightly controlled by vehicle manufacturers. Corporate versus right to repair laws. Look, these laws are a game changer. They prioritize putting power back into the hands of consumers and independent service providers. The overarching goal is to ensure access to the tools, parts, and critical information necessary for vehicle repairs. And here's the exciting part. These laws aren't just narrowly focused on cars. They represent a broader movement that includes various electronic devices. The fundamental principle is beautifully straightforward. If you own something, you should have the right to repair it. Nobody wants to feel trapped in a scenario area where they are cornered into expensive repairs only available through manufacturers or their authorized dealerships. This entire initiative is designed to alleviate the frustration many individuals experience when they feel locked into costly, exclusive repair solutions. In the United States, Massachusetts has set a significant precedent for this movement, boldly taking the lead by establishing a right to repair law. This law mandates that vehicles must be equipped with a standardized data platform that independent repair shops can access but only with the owner's consent. This is indeed a game changer. It effectively dismantles the traditional model in which manufacturing companies monopolize repair information, compelling consumers to rely on expensive dealership services for any fixes. By breaking down this monopoly, Massachusetts has sparked a broader national conversation about consumer rights and access to fair repair opportunities. This marks a major advancement in empowering consumers to have greater control over their repair decisions and related costs. But guess what? 
not everyone is thrilled about this shift. Automotive giants, including Ford, are firmly resisting these changes. Their argument centers around the belief that such laws may conflict with federal regulations and, more importantly, might compromise safety and cybersecurity. They contend that providing unauthorized access to vehicle data could expose customers to hacking risks and significant safety concerns. In light of this, Ford, along with several other manufacturers, is actively pushing for their own legislation aimed at counteracting what states like Massachusetts are enacting. Now, if you think this debate is contentious, allow me to introduce another critical factor that deserves your attention, the ethical dimension surrounding ownership and the right to repair. It raises fundamental questions about consumer sovereignty and corporate responsibility. Shouldn't consumers have the autonomy to choose how and where they want their property repaired? When you purchase a vehicle, it essentially becomes your asset, and with that ownership should come the right to make decisions about its maintenance and repair according to your own preferences. Unfortunately, the previous monopolistic practices have typically stripped this autonomy from consumers, forcing many to either endure high repair costs or even live with malfunctioning devices. Furthermore, this situation opens up discussions about sustainability and waste. The right to repair movement emphasizes not just consumer rights, but also environmental considerations. When manufacturers are allowed to control repair strictly, it often results in inefficiencies and unnecessary waste. For instance, many perfectly functional devices are discarded simply because repairs are made prohibitively expensive or complicated. The right to repair encourages repair and reuse, significantly contributing to a sustainable future. The rise of e-waste due to discarded electronic devices is an alarming issue. With billions of tons disposed of each year globally, the push for repairable products and the right to repair laws could help combat this growing problem. In fact, empowering consumers to repair their own devices, whether automobiles or gadgets, can drive down costs and reduce waste, benefiting both individuals and the planet. And now if you think this is scary and so crucial that it needs to be solved immediately, well let me introduce another factor that that is as crucial if not more. Data and privacy. Have you ever caught yourself wondering if your car is keeping tabs on you? Well, in a way, it actually is. Thanks to the advancements in modern technology, today's vehicles can connect to the internet, gathering, storing, and transmitting data. From enhancing your entertainment experience to optimizing performance and safety features, your car essentially knows where you go, how you drive, and even what kind of conversations you're having when your devices are linked. While this data has the potential to revolutionize your driving experience, it simultaneously raises significant concerns regarding your privacy and security. Today's cars are personal data hubs, especially the trendy connected and automated models that are currently hitting the market. Yet, this extensive data collection isn't without its fair share of risks. If the information collected by your vehicle falls into the wrong hands, it could lead to frightening situations such as stalking, unauthorized tracking, or even identity theft. And it doesn't end there. Consider this, your insurance provider might adjust your premiums based on your driving patterns, or third-party entities could mishandle your personal data. Data. There are severe risks here, some of which can even escalate to national security issues if sensitive information is misappropriated. The Federal Trade Commission has been shedding light on these risks since 2013. They have been advocating for clearer and fairer data management practices in the automotive sector. The FTC insists that companies must present straightforward privacy policies, empowering drivers to know precisely how their data is being utilized. Back in June of 2017, the FTC collaborated with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration to tackle these pressing privacy and security issues head on. And despite these efforts, this remains an immense issue, one you really need to consider before diving into those tempting discounts. Honestly, it can be a tad unsettling. So what are your thoughts on this?